In the last section, we were talking about key signatures. And whenever we did that, we were talking about major keys. We were saying things like, there's two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, so we must be in D major. Or there's three flats, B, E, A flat, so we must be in E flat major. Now, a lot of you watching this video might have already realised, but we've only really given half the picture here because we're only talking about major keys. And the thing that we've neglected to talk about up until now is minor keys. Now, when we were looking at the circle of fifths, we noticed that there were 12 distinct tonics that we could build our major scales from. And actually, for minor keys, there's 12 distinct tonics that we can build these from as well. But it's the same key signature system that we're using, so we don't have to learn an entirely new system of building those key signatures. The key signatures that we already learnt and the way that they're constructed from collections of sharps and collections of flats, this applies equally to, the, to minor scale systems as it does to major scale systems. Every key signature actually represents not one, but two keys. It re represents the major key and it represents the related, the relative minor key. So this means that we need to have a think about what we actually mean by minor keys and how we work out what major keys they're related to. One of the easiest ways to do that is to start thinking about minor scales, although this is slightly problematic because when we talk about minor scales, we're talking about something less concrete than major scales. And this is because there's more than one version of a minor scale. But we'll start with the simplest. Now, every minor scale is related to a major scale. And if we look at that major scale, it just so happens that the sixth degree is the degree that the minor scale is built from. So if we take our D major example with its F sharp and its C sharp, we're going to start building up from D. D is number one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six takes us to B. B is the relative minor for D. So from this degree that we're going to build our relative minor scale. So if we take the sharps that belong to D major, F sharp and C sharp, we keep them, but we're just going to start the whole sequence on B. We get B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. What we got to produce that B minor was all the notes of D major, but just rearranged with B as our new tonic. We call this the natural minor. It's the most closely related to D. Now we mentioned that there's a couple of different types of minor scale that are in use. The reasons that we've got a few different variations on that is partly because of the transition we made from D to the relative minor B there in the natural form, where we're only using exactly the notes of D major, but rearranged from B to B. And the result of that is that although we can start and end on B if we want to, we could easily, just as easily, end on D and we'd be back feeling as though D was still our tonic. So D really feels the point at which the music has come to rest, uh, uh, that we feel comfortable with this as being the centre of the key in the whole note. And this goes back to what we talked about in the previous section, whereby it's actually not just the notes that are available to us, but it's the special relationship that they have and the environment, the sonic environment that they create, and that's inevitably going to pull us back to D. Listen to this though. Now that minor scale had a really different feeling to the natural minor that we started with. We only changed one note, but the result of that one change was to give us a scale that showed us how B really is our new tonic. So the note that we changed was the seventh degree. So instead of having an A natural, as we had when we derived the scale from D major, we had an A sharp. And actually what we heard was that this really led our ears to B being the new tonic. And actually the seventh degree of a scale is called the leading note. 
And we really heard that this raised seventh, raised by a semitone from an A to an A sharp, led our ears to B as our new tonic. So just to recap from previous lectures, we now know that the first degree of the scale is called the tonic. The fifth degree of the scale is called the dominant. And the seventh degree of the scale is called the leading note. And this is the one that leads our ears to the tonic. But don't worry, we're going to cover all these note names and the others in week four. This leads our ears back to the tonic. So the scale that we just produced by raising that seventh degree, we call the harmonic minor scale. And it's the one that has a really distinctive sound. In lecture four, we're going to talk about harmony. We're going to talk about the relationship of chords within a key and the way that the chords move and progress. And at that point, it'll hopefully be a little clearer as to why we call this the harmonic minor scale. So up until now, we've talked about the natural minor scale, the harmonic minor scale, and we're going to go on to talk about the third main type, which is the melodic minor scale. Now, when we were talking about the harmonic minor scale, we noted how distinctive the sound was. And the reason for this distinctive sound is the big gap between the sixth degree and the seventh degree created by raising our seventh degree before leading back to our seventh degree. It's a whole tone and a half. It's three semitones in one leap. So it takes us up. If we want to sing it, we have to sing B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A sharp, B. It's a long way to travel. It's particularly awkward for people to sing. It's a big, big interval to sing. So although that distinctive sound of the harmonic minor scale is really useful in composition and it can create some really nice, interesting sounds, actually in practice, to get round the difficulty of that interval, the melodic shape of the scale is smoothed out. And actually, when it's smoothed out, the result is the melodic minor. So the melodic minor scale is different actually to all the scales we've encountered so far in that the ascending form when it's going up differs from the descending form when it comes back down so you can hear that we wanted to do something that would smooth out that great big tone and a half gap that that was difficult to sing a great big leap um, so on the way up, that one, so on the way up, the way that the melodic minor is shaped is it smooths out that gap. It keeps that sharpened seventh, the one that leads our ears up from the leading note to the tonic, but to fill in that big old gap, it raises the sixth degree as well. It's easier to sing. B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. Now when we come down, our ears care less about that leading tone to tonic interval. That when we're going the other way, the leading note isn't leading up to the tonic anymore. It's kind of just a seventh. So when we come down in the melodic minor shape, both the sharpened seventh goes back and the sharpened sixth reverts back. So we just come down in the natural minor form. So to make a nice smooth melodic um, musical shape coming down, we just take away that sharpened seventh and we take away that sharpened sixth and we just come back down in the same pattern as the natural minor and that's easy to sing too. B, A, G, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, B. So what we can say is that the ascending form of the harmonic minor scale is just the natural minor with a raised sixth and seventh, whereas when we come back down, it's exactly the same as the natural minor.